Stephen A. Smith recently went on the Chris Carter podcast and it still seems that he is unaware that the public can clearly see his disgust and his hate for one Max Kellerman. Take a listen to this clip. Max Kellerman. Yeah. What was the rub there? Why wasn't that show as successful as other partners that you've had in that in that spot? Lack of chemistry. Um, believe it or not, it was more his fault than mine. Um, I've seen his friend Marcellus Wiley uh, bring up stuff. Um, Marcellus Wiley knows one side. He certainly never spoke to me about it. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, never called, mm -hmm. never asked, or anything like that. And I'm not hating on him for it because that's his man. Him and Max are very, very tight. Um, but if you want to talk about me, I'm not hard to find. Ask me. Well, we've I, had I, hundreds of conversations. That's and right. Marcel said hundreds of conversations. How about so, that? So, How about that? Yes. Yeah, so. And yeah, yeah. is one of the many brothers and sisters that this dude has helped out at ESPN. Because, listen, when you interview at ESPN, it might be a phone interview, video interview. It might be in yeah. person. But when, they, when, they, when you leave, guess what they do? Yeah. Stephen A. Bro, what you think? Hey, you know him? You know her? Yeah, that all the time. But but I will say this. You know, I might disagree with what he says, but there have been times when I think that Marcellus has been more than fair and he's entitled to his opinion. I'm certainly not here uh, to criticize him. I only bring him up because when I think about Max Kellerman, I think about the narrative that he's helped put out there. Mm. And I'm like, talk to me. And you, all you have to do, because I might, I might, there's certain things I may not say publicly, but I'd have told Marcellus because I know that's his boy. Right. Um, you know, but it was a chemistry issue. And I, and I think that people need to understand it was mostly my fault. Wait, wait, stop this shit. Wait, wait, what? Believe it or not, it was more his fault than mine. I thought so. Let's continue. I'm the leader. I'm the executive mm. producer of the show. Mm. I'm the star of the show. I'm not looking at, I wasn't looking at Max Kellerman and saying it was his fault that the show failed. We're talking about us. How I vibe with all the people that I vibe for. The proof is in the pudding. Look at how I vibed with the people that have been there since he's been gone. Look at how I vibed with Skip Bayless as a debate partner before he arrived. I think that Max Kellerman is somebody that I'm rooting for to return to this business. Um, he's somebody that is nothing short of brilliant, like yes. genius level, yes. brilliant, absolutely true. Here's the issue for a debate show. Because you are such a genius and you are so brilliant and you have the ability to articulate yourself the way that he does. At some point in time, you're talking and you're talking and you're talking and you're talking above the audience to the point where they find themselves asking, what did you just say? Now, I might get it because I know you mm -hmm. and I know where you're going right. and I know how you feel because right. I'm working with you every day. Are we really gonna do this shit again? And homie, you got it wrong. Got it homie wrong. ain't getting on. Just cause homie got a song. Got a song. That's that nigga, you know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing. Welcome back to the channel. G Mac back with some thoughts, with some opinions, with some reactions. Like, subscribe, comment if you like the content. And with that said, let's take this walk. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but there's also a few clear themes in relation to how he feels about Max. And the major one is threat. Two of Stephen A's biggest attributes he protects is his ego and his identity. And Max threatened both of those. Now, when you talk about ego, it, it immediately jumped off the page that Max was more well-read and more articulate on matters than, yes, the great Stephen A. Smith. Skip was a writer and a best-selling author, but he would never be confused with being well-read and articulate. Oh, white guy views, but ultimately bowed down to Stephen A's articulation, particularly on race in America. However, Max was ultra-liberal and Stephen A was conservative. And again, Max was well-read. He used to kill Stephen A in debates on behalf of black people. And that's where his identity was threatened. Max's rhetoric was more pro-black, so Stephen A couldn't bring, as a black man, any balance to any convo about race. It also became hard for him to live up to that pro-black facade that 
you know, he's always upheld in the community. So that's why it's sad watching him trying to convince himself that the public also didn't like Max. Even with the Tom Brady Cliff and I take Eagle Dollar, I get the post that people still like Max's takes more. The views stayed the same because we watched the relationship in real time. As Marcellus Wiley pointed out. I know the whole T.O. when he said that, hey, Max is blacker than you. Obviously, that doesn't feel good to hear, especially in front of the entire world. I also know there's a narrative that you didn't like Max, right? And I didn't put that out there. We watched the show for five years. Dog, you know how many times they cut that camera and Max says something funny, something silly, something stupid, something profound, whatever, and this is what we got from you. You looking at Max like this. Trust me, I've worked with so many co-hosts. Do I have to name them all? I know when I'm being sabotaged. I know when I'm being undermined. You know what chemistry looks like. Let me know what you think in the comments because that just couldn't be summed up better. But with that said, hopefully you've been entertained and informed while passing this precious time that we have. And hopefully I've earned your sub. This has been doing it for GP. Till next time.